first of all, I just wondered if you could sort of give me a summary of, you know, what's happening in your industry at the moment. But also, I'm just interested as to know why you think somebody would opt to use guardian vaults as opposed to a traditional bank security vault. Well, part of what's going on in the industry right now is, um, you know, one of the things that I teach uh, in some of my seminars and that I'll be teaching tonight, and I taught last Friday night, when I was writing my book, I discovered that every 30 to 40 years, the world has an entirely different monetary system. There's a crisis, a meltdown starts, there's an emergency meeting of, you know, it'll probably, you're going to see something before the end of the decade. Yep. where there's going to be an emergency meeting of like the G20 finance ministers or something to hash out a brand new monetary system. Uh, during these events, uh, there's very often bank holidays, which you just saw in Cyprus. Uh, yep. There's um, capital controls. There's regulation. In the United States, they nationalized gold in 1933, and it was illegal for Americans to own gold except for jewelry. Uh, from 1933 until the end of 1974. Um, when you are, if, if you keep anything in a safe deposit box at a bank, um, it falls under banking law and you do risk these events like a um, bank holiday, during which what we see in a lot of countries, like Cyprus, is a lot of wealth of your wealth is stolen <laughs> by the bank or the government during that bank holiday when you can't get to your wealth. Uh, when you have your precious metals stored by a private uh, firm, a private vaulting company, uh, they, then bank regulation does not apply, so they will be open during a bank holiday. Uh, it also, it's, <clears throat> it isn't insured when it's in a, uh, uh, at least in the United States, uh, if it's in a safe deposit box in a bank, your holdings in that safe deposit box, regardless of what they be, are not insured unless you add that to your homeowner's insurance. Yep. Uh, at a private vaulting company, such as Guardian, uh, you do have insurance on the goods that are in your safe deposit box. All around, it's just a much better service. Um, now, for me personally, uh, I'm sort of high profile. People know that I talk about precious metals. I used to have a bunch of precious metals at home. I have very little now and I plan on having uh, none at home shortly just because I feel like I could become a target. Yeah, uh, exactly. And one of the things about gold and silver is uh, they make you sleep very well at night. The number of ounces don't suddenly vanish uh, just because some a uh, news statement came out. Uh, the number of ounces stays the same. If you've taken delivery of it, you'd... one of the things about gold and silver, what I'm betting on isn't as much gold and silver, but I'm betting on the stupidity of central banks around the planet. <laughs> and they are all printing their currency into oblivion. They're all what, sorry? They're printing their currency into oblivion. Yep. Right. So, you, are you personally invested in Guardian Vaults? Uh, I, I, you mean invested as a uh, you, shareholder? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely not. I'm just uh, a. I, I sure do like the people at Guardian Vaults. I can tell you that that much. Yeah. Um, and I intend on storing some of my own metals here in the future. I don't have any holdings at Guardian Vaults, and I I have nothing to do with their. Uh, uh, although, I'm very impressed with their management and uh, considering if, if they ever open a vault in the uh, United States, I... Is there anything like this in the U.S.? Uh, no, there's nothing uh, on this level. Yeah, it's really interesting. So, just, could you just summarize your outlook for gold and silver? You know, <clears throat> the banking crisis in Cyprus has uh, shown the world that banks, from the moment a bank makes its first loan, it is basically uh, insolvent at that point. And uh, the way they uh, play with the books makes them look like they're not. Uh, the, in, in Cyprus, 
what you are seeing is there's some depositors that are going to lose everything. Everybody that's uh, over $100,000, they're going to lose at least 40%. Uh, and so the government does feel, and the central bank, you know, the, the ECB, this is the European Central Bank, uh, feel that the currency belongs to them and that yeah. you're only allowed to use it temporarily and that they can take it away from you at any time they want. involved things is for people just bruised with torrid markets over the last few years and want that security and um, to not be at the mercy of sort of global market ructions basically. Exactly. What's yours is yours. Yeah. Do you think this is an idea that could catch on in the States? Uh, yes. Um, uh, you know, my company already offers storage at Brinks and so on, which is, yes. um, and it's segregated storage and allocated. Uh, um, here, uh, you get segregated right down to the point of having your own uh, safe deposit box with nothing else in it. And yes, I believe that this is something that people in the United States would just be eating up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it just seemed... Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to put some quotes together and send them through to your email address. Is that okay? Oh, that's wonderful. Brilliant. Look, Mike, it's been great speaking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.